G'day, Clint Patterson here. Today we're going to go through how to recover from eating the wrong foods when it stirs up inflammation. And I'm going to use a case study um, of someone who I've been working with inside Patterson Program Support. And so this is going to be important information. If you're following the Patterson Program and you have gotten yourself off the, off the rails by eating the wrong foods, um, or you are currently on track but you're worried about what would happen if you ate the wrong foods or even if you're sort of still on the fence and you're eating all sorts of different things um, and you're not following uh, the Patterson program this is going to be an interesting video because you are going to see what can happen um, when you do eat the wrong foods and you might be doing it every single day stirring up inflammation so let's have a look at what uh, can be done if this happens uh, so we can get back on track Okay, so this case study is going to be regarding uh, Emma, and she's Emma1 inside Patterson Program Support. Uh, if you're in that platform, you can go and look at her story in a lot of detail. Um, so Emma's timeline is, uh, is as follows. I'm going to walk through Emma's timeline and show you where she was at uh, and then what happened with regards to her um, mistake with her eating, how her inflammation then changed and how it changed dramatically and then what she did to get back on track so as to help you if the same thing uh, occurs for yourself so um, in 2018 um, which as I'm recording this video is about 12 months ago uh, Emma joined Patterson program support um, in uh, in the aim to remain on no drugs and she wants to stay that way. So that was her goal when she joined a little over a year ago. So she started Patterson Program Diet and within three weeks uh, she was feeling great and had her first pain-free day. Okay, Keep in mind she'd never been on drugs, recently diagnosed, so off to a fantastic start. And it just goes to illustrate how important the food is that we eat. Forget that the medical profession will say that food has no impact that's uh, obviously absurd. Uh, food plays a major role in conjunction with exercise as to influencing your uh, disease activity, uh, of course, as, it, as food and exercise does for every disease. Okay, so in June, she was doing yoga three times per week. Now, she kept that up for 12 months. So fast forward to May 2019, which is now quite recent as I'm recording this video. Um, so she'd been one year on Patterson program and she was pain free. Okay, she's on no drugs, so she's doing great. And she says that once you know that exercise several times per week is absolutely essential, you can't unknow that. Okay, so she's uh, exercising frequently, three times a week, uh, and she does hot yoga, eating moderately advanced foods. So she's doing really good. Uh, she's got lentils, She's, uh, I think she had bread in there, but she's having oats, you know, she's advanced through rice and she's obviously having all of her uh, fruits and vegetables and stuff. So she's got a very diverse plant-based diet. Okay, then on the 11th of June 2019, she ate two muffins containing coconut oil. Now, just two muffins. All right, so these muffins were given to her by a family member who had been excited that she'd been able to eat, you know, more diversity in her diet and made that sort of uh, progression over the past 12 months. But what family members don't realize, and certainly what no one understands when you go out to restaurants and so forth, is that we have to have absolutely zero oils. Now, the, the emphasis could not be placed enough on that point. And I'll talk about why in just a moment as to why the oils are just so bad. But we have to have no oils. And this family member included coconut oil in the muffins, even though she knew that she's not meant to. It was just a mistake. Okay, these things happen. It's life, right? We're not living in an in a, in a absolute crazy bubble where we can't interact with other humans and with the rest of the world, right? And so her pain levels went from zero to a six out of 10 to seven out of 10 the next day. All right, just from two muffins, all right? So what she did, and this is the recommendations that I make, uh, and her case study illustrates this perfectly. She went straight back to the baseline foods. Now, 
This means going back to really simple buckwheat, quinoa, sweet potatoes, leafy greens. Uh, I also like to include uh, some onion garlic in there, which are very good for the gut bacteria and uh, miso paste, okay, being able to eat some, uh, some fermented foods that also enhance the flavor, the taste, and therefore the saliva and digestive juices that are produced for the meal. All right, so she's gone straight back to that after experiencing, for the first time, a significant pain uh, experience after 12 months of being pain-free on the Patterson program. Now, she's done that for five days until she's gotten rid of her pain again. Um, on the 27th of June, she was then able to slowly reintroduce more food. So she did five days of baseline, got rid of the pain over those five days, and then slowly began to reintroduce foods that she'd previously eaten for a long period of time. And this is exactly what needs to be done. So pain in the body, inflammation in the body creates a snowball effect. So the best way to think of this is once pain is in your body, think of it like your house has just started to catch fire. So we know that the fire progresses through the house until the whole house becomes inflamed. And that's precisely what can happen in the body and what has a tendency to happen with rheumatoid arthritis or any inflammatory arthritic autoimmune condition. So what we need to do is quickly eliminate the flames before it spreads because we know that a large burning fire is much harder to put out than just a small few embers and a little few flames. So that's what she's done. She's immediately what I call uh, extinguished the flames by going back to baseline, simple foods. She's gone and exercised and kept up her exercise. And, uh, and then what's happened is then after um, one month, she was able to then have quite a few of what we call the moderate, moderately advanced foods. So this might be rice, this might be lentils and things like this, um, all the fruits back into her diet. Okay, so it took a month to get most of the foods back into her diet from where she was, um, but she was still delicate. Okay, but she was pain free on a more diverse diet. And on the 5th of August, she's just updated me. And she said that she she uh, is just only now still waiting to implement beans and nuts, and then she'll be back to where she was again. So, what are the what are the, some important points here? Is first of all how significant the reaction is to the coconut oil, and it's not just coconut oil; it's all oils. And if I was to extend that even further, it's all high fat foods until your digestive system is really robust. Okay, fat really is the number one enemy when you have an autoimmune condition. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's also, um, so yeah, here's a summary. So it took almost one month after the muffin incident to get back to similar diet, a whole month, okay? She did five days of baseline to clear the pain. It took five days, right? Didn't happen in one day, five whole days to clear the pain using simple foods and then, and using frequent yoga and then she slowly reintroduced the foods and this and her situation now it's not rock solid but it's very steady and controlled okay so uh, 10 out of 10 to emma for having this experience uh, because no harm done long term there's no problem with just a short-term inflammation burst like that in terms of joint damage and it's negligible right not measurable so she's had the experience learned the lessons and it's a good lesson for us all. I have had many experiences just as Emma has been through over the many, many years. And I've seen this frequently with other people that I work with inside the coaching platform. All right, so I wanted to share this with you. And I wanna now talk about the vegetable oils and the three major problems with the vegetable oils, okay? So the three major problems are as follows. First of all, all high fat foods create temporary leaky gut okay so it doesn't matter whether the high fat comes from chicken or beef or dairy products or whether or not it's coming from um, the uh, oils themselves there's a temporary increase in the intestinal permeability which means the contents of whatever is associated or nearby those foods at the same time as the high fat that's going to be more likely to end up in the bloodstream 
when this is happening in our digestive tract, then we're getting more pathogenic bacteria or, or even just regular bacteria, just bacteria is also entering into the bloodstream. And we know that inflammation in the joints is a reaction from the body that's trying to clear circulating immune complexes or parts of bacteria uh, cell walls or proteins that are in the joints and lodged there. So we're trying to clear it out. The immune system gets involved. The immune system uses inflammation or generates inflammation. Okay, so that's what's going on. So we don't want more stuff in the blood because that's going to cause more inflammation. The second major problem with vegetable oils is free radical damage. Okay, so the oils themselves once they enter the body, create more free radicals in the body. And we want to minimize free radicals in the body because free radicals can damage the proteins, fats, and the DNA of our cells. And when those, when the proteins and fats get damaged, they can create immunoreactive proteins themselves as a, as a chemical uh, sequence end product. All right, so we definitely do not want to be creating more free radical damage. We all know the, the simple kind of rules from, you know, almost like school level nutrition, which is we need to eat lots of antioxidants so that we don't have too many free radicals in our diet. And in rheumatoid arthritis, that is more, <laughs> more profound than you could ever imagine. All right. So um, there's a lot more to, uh, to this, which I'll talk about in, in other videos. But, uh, but suffice to say that we do not want to be eating any food that creates more free radical damage. And oils are very high in free radical uh, creation in the body. And especially when they are fried and cooked. That takes it to a whole new order of magnitude. All right. But you saw here that where the case study is only non-cooked oils. So just to give you an idea of how bad those can be. Okay, and thirdly, the third problem with vegetable oils is the poor omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. Okay, uh, all these vegetable oils have poor omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, and it's the ratio that matters the most. Okay, so we've got uh, inflammation coming from that um, because of the pathways that are involved with how those oils are processed in the body. So we've omega-6, inflammation. All right, so we've just gone and added leaky gut and therefore more pathogenic uh, bacteria entering our bloodstream into our joints, triggering infl inflammation. We've increased free radical load to the body, which creates inflammation uh, and can even drive autoimmunity through derivatives of proteins and fats. And poor omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, again, driving inflammation. So no wonder Emma did not feel well after even those small little muffins. Okay, so to wrap this up, some key concepts here. Um, you can see that autoimmune health is a delicate balance. If, like all of us, we've got to be careful. Okay, so you do get to a point where you don't have to be as careful and your body can deal with the uh, sort of um, offense the, the damage that can enter the body through things like the, the muffins and so forth. But there's no absolute rock solid, you're fine forever, and you're going to not have to think about or worry about this stuff. You just can worry about it a little less. Um, but you can see that at uh, uh, the stage that Emma was at, it was too big of a reaction, too big of a, an intervention, the oils for her, and you, can, you saw the result. Okay, we need to avoid oils at all costs. They are in they are a processed, non-human food. And I've explained why and the damages that can be done. Um, in other videos, I've talked about how we can get our essential fatty acids from foods, uh, the ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s, why it's so critical. And so we do not fall into the silly, commonplace misconception that we need oils in our body. We do not. We need essential fatty acids. Okay? And they're different. Right? We can get them from food. Okay, never trust food made by others. All right, doesn't matter how much you love them. Doesn't matter if you birthed them. Doesn't matter if they give you joy. Do not trust their food. Make sure you know what's going into the food because it's your body and it's your agony 
um, that you'll have to deal with. If a problem occurs, reset immediately. Just remember the, the metaphor of the burning house. And it takes time to get back on track and allow the time it takes. Get the inflammation down quickly through a rapid reset. Hit, hit the exercise, keep the foods real simple until you've got things back under your control and then slowly bring the foods back in and you'll get back on track again. And daily exercise is essential for antioxidant defenses and the microbiome. So whilst in this you know, presentation I've mostly focused on the food, um, do not underappreciate the importance of the exercise that Emma has been doing for the past 12 months in her ability to uh, stay pain free. I mean, she's not on drugs, she's pain free, she's had the incident, she's got back on track, but exercise plays a key role in all that. You know, one of the bullet points I talked about was regard to the, um, the oils and how they create free radical damage. Well, exercise builds up your antioxidant defenses um, uh, res reserves, okay, and these are things like um, these are things like glutathione, um, catalase, and superoxide superoxide dismutase. These all help to quelch the free radical uh, load coming into the body. Okay, so by exercising, uh, she's been building up on those, and with with more time. Uh, she will build more antioxidant defenses so that potentially if she ever has another uh, muffin abuse, uh, maybe it won't be as bad. But uh, you don't want to test those things. That's not something you just want to do to find out, right? And finally, problems do occur. Just address them and you'll be fine, okay? So I hope this has been helpful. Um, thanks for working so hard on your health and I will see you uh, in another video or another podcast.